On this video, I will be doing an inductive Akkadian grammars, uh, grammatical analysis of Hammurabi's law, code uh, number 266. Uh, we've been trying to sort of work our way through slowly some of the laws of Hammurabi's code. And we are now at law uh, 266. And so as I read, I'm following Borger's transliteration. Uh, I'm doing my own normalization and my own inductive, uh, pretty much word by word grammar. So we begin uh, with Shuma Ina Tabatsim. Shuma simply means if, inna, I should say, means in, and then tarbatsim, uh, the Sumerian was tur, capital T-U-R, uh, in, uh, if, in an animal stall, is the way I'm translating atsim from tarbatsum. And notice in takes the genitive case here, if and the im ending a singular uh, genitive. Remember, uh, um is nominative in your suffix endings. Im is genitive and am um is accusative. So in <coughs> an animal stall, lip it, it, lip it, it, uh, I'm, a, I'm rendering here, lip pit, uh, if in an animal stall, an undertaking uh, of a god, and lip pit it, and then we have elim. Elim is the genitive singular from elum, the nominative for god. The Sumerian uh, read dinger. D-I-N-G-E-R, capital D. So if in an animal stall, an undertaking of a god, and then next word, it tab she, it tab she, um, from bashu, and we could understand this to occur or to happen, if an undertaking of a god has occurred. Here's an NT, a uh, preterite stem, third masculine singular from Bashu. Uh, notice here the N, tab, the tab here uh, is indicative the first T, of the N stem, and then the T after that makes it an NT preterite, third masculine singular, in, in my understanding of the grammar here. So, uh, if in an animal stall, an undertaking of a god has occurred or is. And then we move to the next words uh u lu ne shum u lu ne shum u lu means or and uh, ne shum means a lion and the sumerian is capital u r period capital M-A-H, uh, with a, uh, underneath the H, you have a, like a, s a small half moon. Urmah, uh, Urmah would be the Sumerian. So, or a lion from Nashum, or a lion, Idu'uk. Idu'uk is from the root Daku, uh, to uh, kill, or a lion has 
killed. And notice here, uh, kill, we could say. Uh, here we have the root daku. And this, my understanding of this is a GT preterite, third masculine singular from daku. And notice here uh, the repetition of the D. It do it took became it duke, where the D assimil or the T assimilated into the D, uh, showing to be a GT preterite. So if a lion has uh, made a kill or has killed in the uh, in the animal stall and then we move on to the next phrase reum uh, the shepherd mahar be elim a god <coughs> notice reum is your nominative uh, singular. Uh, I'm reminded of the Hebrew <clears throat> uh, Adonai Ro'e, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, and Sipa is the capital S I P A, the Sumerian. So the shepherd, and then we have Mahi. Uh, and probably uh, Borger says we need to read it. Mahar, that is before, <clears throat> and here we then have the preposition with Elim, before a God. Elim again is your genitive singular with the em ending, and capital D I N G E R is the Sumerian for God. Before a God. Uba ama, uh, uba ama uh, would be uba ma has proven himself to be innocent. I'm understanding this as a D stem from a babu to prove to be innocent. So if uh, and we have the doubling of the middle radical in the B and has proven himself to be innocent from a bebu uh, and the U prefix indicating uh, a D stem. And ma is your conjunction uh, and notice has proven himself to be innocent in the presence of a god boner uh, i guess we could render ma in a negative but of the dead animal and so we move miki it t miki it t uh, would be of the dead animal uh, another genitive singular here of the dead animal, and then we continue, uh, of the dead animal uh, shall receive, but the owner of the dead animal shall receive from him, the has proved himself innocent of the dead animal. Let me just conclude there. But uh, of the animal stall, the owner, literally, so we would have that uh, tar bat sim again. I'm rendering that of the animal stall. Another uh, genitive singular in the Akkadian or the Sumerian would be capital T U R. Of the animal stall, the owner of the animal stall. And so we move uh, to the next. Uh, two words, Be'el Tarbatsim. 
the owner of the animal stole. And here we have uh, two nouns in construct, uh, bel, meaning owner, and tar batsim, the genitive singular of the animal stall. Uh, think of belum, uh, meaning owner, becoming bel here in construct uh, with tar batsim. So the owner of the animal stall, imma ha, imma har shu, imma har shu, a shell receive, notice here, Emma Harshu is from Maharu, to receive. It's the G uh, present, uh, shall receive, followed by Shu, which is your pronominal suffix, third masculine singular. Shall receive it from Maharu. So, the owner will would then receive of the dead animal, is the thought here. Shall receive it, the owner of the stall. Uh, so when we look at the translation, trying to follow a literal translation, if in an animal stall, an undertaking of a god has occurred, or has happened, or a lion uh, kills, and the root here, as we said, is Daku, uh, or a lion uh, has killed, that GT stem, uh, of Daku, a lion has killed uh, in, in this undertaking of a god, and I notice Meeks renders it, if a, visit, if a visitation of a god has occurred in a sheepfold, and I'm rendering it in an animal stall, or a lion has made a kill, uh, he renders it, or uh, a lion, a duke, has killed, then the shepherd before a god shall uh, has proved himself or shall prove himself innocent. In other words, the shepherd before a God shall prove himself innocent. And uh, again, I'm understanding this as a D stem, uh, a D present stem shall prove himself innocent in the presence of a God or before a God, but the owner of the uh, sheepfold. And I'm rendered this, but of the animal stall, the owner of the stall, literally. Uh, so literally of the dead animal, of the uh, animal stall, the owner of the stall, trying to render it very literally here, uh, shall receive it. That is, shall receive the dead animal. And again, that is just a very wooden or literal uh, translation. Um, here's it. If a visitation of God has occurred in a sheepfold or a lion has made a kill, the shepherd shall prove himself innocent in the presence of God, but the owner of the sheepfold shall receive from him the animal stricken in the fold or the dead animal. So, uh, and by the way, this is on page 166 in the ancient Near Eastern text that I'm using, which is... Uh, sort of a small, uh, not the big one, but the smaller, what I call baby Annette, baby ancient Near Eastern text. Uh, so again, that's a very wonderful translation that he makes, that Meeks makes. So I'm going to stop there, uh, and I'm hoping this 
helps somebody working through this Akkadian text. It keeps my mind alive in terms of trying to keep alive the Akkadian I learned years ago in my PhD program. Uh, like I said, I've had three years, I had three years of Akkadian back in the 80s. And so it's a challenge for me to continue to revive it. And I'm hoping that this is a help to someone. Uh, we were taught inductively, and this is what I like to do when I do grammar, to do it in an inductive way. Uh, I would also encourage someone to read a deductive grammar, where you'll look at all your uh, verbs and look at all your suffixes and so forth. But what we're doing is trying to take that now and read a text and try to analyze each word as we go along. Um, I enjoy inductive study of grammar, whether it's Greek or Hebrew or, in this case, Akkadian. But thank you. I hope this is a help to someone.